Let's give this a shot. So last time I made this digital sampler using a RAM chip uh, at its core and it's 128 kilobytes of static RAM. Um, I have binary counters, 17 bits worth of binary counters to go to 17 address lines that cycle through and um, in an ADC uh, that captures the, um, the digital value of the analog audio input and stores it at each one of the address uh, bytes. So please watch my previous video on how I made this circuit happen. Today I wanted to add an additional interface to it, a DJ scratch wheel using an AS5600. So the AS5600, the way it works is basically it's a hall sensor. It's got four little hall sensor elements at the four corners of the chip and using a diametric disc magnet, meaning north and south on opposite, not on opposite sides of the disc, but on diametrically opposed, centered over the chip, you can get an analog output if you attach the GPO pin to VCC and the output is from zero to VCC, which is zero to five volts. Um, some people use it with 3.3 volts, but you can use it with five volts. And so the way the magnet is oriented, it should be centered right over the center of the chip and it should be suspended with an air gap of about one millimeter overlying the chip, as you can see on the little picture on the left. And in that way, the four hall sensors uh, coordinate to tell you the exact um, position. And in this way, it functions as a magnetic rotary encoder that can spin freely uh, 360 degrees plus and, uh, and, and in both directions. For the actual spinning mechanism, I decided to use a fidget spinner, which has a ball bearing on it, and the wheel of it can spin freely in both directions. In order to allow for the one millimeter air gap, I carved a recess into a block of wood and put the AS5600 breakout board uh, into that recess with hot glue. And then I attached a magnet to a shaft on the fidget spinner and basically glued the fidget spinner down uh, so that the magnet is overlying the center of the chip. And here I am just testing it out, make sure it spins freely, and it does. Here you can see the magnet laying just over the center of the chip um, by a one millimeter air gap. Here's the completed interface. Use the coaster. And it's the fidget spinner it's connected to and the magnets underneath. And the little board is right there. So let's test it out. It spins very neatly. That's good. So I've connected up the AS5600 wires which is basically the red wire here is um, VCC. Uh, the white wire is the GPO pin that goes to VCC, uh, five volts. Um, green is the ground wire and the yellow is the analog output. So since I have this on five volts, um, it should give me a reading between zero and five volts. So let's test it out. Let's turn this on. All right, we have 4.37 volts. Now it's going to zero. Now, uh, let me make it 500 milliseconds. And that's the voltage cycling as I turn this. And if I spin it, which it can do, it does the trick. And if I spin it the opposite direction, it's going to go the opposite way. 
And now, let's test it out with the ADC I made. Okay, this is the this is the point between five and zero. There's a little hysteresis there built into the AS5600, but it goes complete rotation. I'm going to mark out the zero five volts point so I don't cross it when I'm actually using it. it. Looks like it's right there. So let's mark it out. That's all right. So there's a zero volt point. If I go counterclockwise from here it goes all the way to 5 volts but if I go clockwise it just starts counting it starts going upward that's the zero crossing if I could generate a nice clock signal this way And that's a pretty good user interface. It's a little wobbly because of the the bearing is complete is not completely stable on the fidget spinner, but it does the trick and it doesn't uh, it doesn't wobble that much. You know, I know if I could press it and it doesn't go anywhere, I could put weight on it. The only problem with this coaster is it's like a little slidey. I need to put some kind of grip tape on it. Maybe electrical tape will do the trick. And uh, just to get some grip so I could run this kind of like a record. Like that. Very responsive. So is that ADC. All right, I'm gonna implement it. A little paint and an acrylic glass cover, and we have ourselves a working sampler circuit. So in order to implement this properly, we need to uh, modify the original uh, sampler circuit uh, in order to incorporate the AS5600 DJ Scratcher. And so in order to do that, we have to add two additional components. This is another uh, analog to digital converter um, and a buffer chip, a tri-state buffer chip. Um, the analog to digital converter is a the same one I used before. It's an ADC 0804 8 bit digital uh, or analog to digital converter that takes the 0 to 5 volt output of the AS5600 and turns it into an 8 bit binary value. That 8 bit binary value is attached in parallel to the eight most significant bits of the um, address uh, of the AS uh, or of the RAM chip. And so the reason why I chose to do it this way, A, is because um, I only have an 8-bit analog to digital converter and not a 17-bit one. Um, and also, if you use the top 8 bits, the bits, the binary values correspond to the uh, amount of rotation that you get and how much of the music is, uh, or of the audio sample, is being traversed with the sweep of the uh, AS5600 wheel. Since the RAM chip can hold eight seconds of audio sample data um, based on a 16 kilohertz sampling rate, um, one full rotation of the wheel will encompass the entire eight seconds. A half rotation will encompass 
four seconds. And if you go all the way down to one 256th of a rotation, you get 0.03 seconds, which is an adequate enough resolution. The other item that needs to be added here is a tri-state buffer in between the binary counter chips, or at least the eight most significant bits of the 17-bit uh, bi binary counter, and the address uh, lines, the eight most significant bits of the address lines. And the reason for that is that uh, the output of the ADC without a buffer will be sunk into the um, current of the uh, uh, the outputs of the binary counters. And in order to avoid that, we put a tri-state buffer so you could be able to turn off the buffers and put the outputs in a high impedance state. Finally, the AS5600, um, which is oh, the breakout board is shown here and it's wired, you know, in a standard fashion. The, out, the analog output of this um, you get when the GPO pin is uh, wired to VCC. And that output goes into the input of an 8-bit uh, analog to digital converter. That has its own tri-state outputs on it, so that could be turned off and on uh, with uh, pin 1 uh, switched between VCC and ground. So let's test this out. This is a test. This is a test of the Bridgecoff sampler. This is a test. This is only a test. So here's the proof of concept. So let's, I have a little tiny microphone circuit right here. Uh, it's basically an electric microphone uh, getting powered by a 4.7K potentiometer going through a one microfarad capacitor. And the output of that is going into the sampler circuit. And so that's the input. Um, so uh, let's test out the sampler circuit. So I'm gonna turn the ADC on. It's a little noisy signal because I, mean, I have it grounded in a crappy way right now, but um, this is the record button. So um, let's make it happen. This is a test. This is a test. We're testing here and we're testing here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Okay, stop recording. Now let's play it. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to turn off the ABC. And we're testing here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's test out this scratcher. Playing backwards. Playing backwards that way. That right, sounds funny. Here's some nonsense I recorded on this just through the microphone here. And uh, here's what it sounds like. So that worked as expected, and so now let's put everything together and see how well this sampler deals with real audio. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted.
Sounds pretty cool. 